I decided to join what was then Australians for an Ecologically Sustainable Population, and which has since morphed into Sustainable Population Australia, because of my concern about the impact of the human population of Australia on our natural systems. My original formal training was in physics, and I suppose I'm proud of the fact that I've used my background in physics to engage with the big problems facing humanity, uh, our impacts on natural systems. Probably we should have every night information about the state of the natural environment and once a year check up on minor things like the price of copper or the state of the Hong Kong share market. So I'm proud to have been involved in producing that first national report on the state of the environment and probably a bit depressed that uh, more than 20 years later there's still been very little concerted political action to address the serious problems that we identified in that report. While the current growth trajectory leads inevitably to collapse, uh, none of those trends is inevitable. Um, I think those of us who understand the problems about the unsustainability of the current growth trajectory have a moral responsibility to be trying to deflect the trajectory of development. The reason population is a big issue is that all of the forces that are contributing to the degradation of natural systems are more or less directly proportional to population. If there are more people, there are more impacts. So I've argued that it's irresponsible to be on a trajectory of population increasing without limit. It seems to me that in a rational world we would have a, a long-term goal of stabilising the population at a level that could be sustainably supported. But without solving the population problem, there is no possibility even in principle of getting back into balance with natural systems. I'm sometimes asked how you can rationally argue for reducing the migrant intake without it appearing to be cloaking a racist agenda of wanting to keep particular people out. And I think it's important to emphasise that the environmental issues and the infrastructure issues are not affected by the racial background, uh, the ethnicity, uh, the religious views, the sexual orientation of the people who come to Australia. They're only influenced by the numbers. Uh, Australians are destroying the environment and it's reasonable to criticise the scale of the migrant intake, but there's no reason to believe that uh, more damage is done by Pakistanis or Filipinos coming to Australia than by uh, Australians who were born here. And I believe very strongly in a non-discriminatory immigration policy. It's been politically convenient to demonise the small number who are arriving by boat to distract attention from the fact that much larger numbers are coming here under government approved programs. Uh, so governments can at the same time claim to be in strong control of our borders um, while simultaneously praising their increasing of the level of the economy by allowing much larger numbers of people to arrive by aircraft and uh, drive up house prices. I suppose what's interesting is that in the last 10 years there have been a small number of politicians like Kelvin Thompson in Victoria, uh, a small number of um, people in the business community like Dick Smith uh, who are concerned about population and have, been, have had the courage to speak up publicly about it. I think the most concrete achievement of SPA is to have at least some politicians and public figures now prepared to talk about population because when I was young nobody questioned the assertion that a rapidly increasing population is good for everybody and uh, that is now being openly questioned and that can only be good. Uh, politicians are always looking for simple answers to complex questions, simple answer like grow the population and it's, it's the wrong answer to the complex question of how can we achieve a better future for Australia. And 
I think uh, SPA has succeeded in getting that issue of infrastructure and the real measurable cost of population increase on the agenda. Uh, it hasn't yet succeeded in getting politicians to take meaningful action, but in the final analysis, politicians can only for so long defy the community mood. And uh, I believe it will become increasingly untenable for politicians to defy the increasing public awareness that there is a real cost to the rate of population increase that they've been cheerfully approving. Probably in the distant future, when the population has been stabilised, either by conscious action or by forces we can't control, people will look back in puzzlement and wonder about, were people really so stupid that they didn't think we needed to control the population, that they thought that it would take care of itself? I believe that being a patron of SPA gives me a responsibility to assist them in keeping the issue of population on the national agenda. Without there being some countervailing pressure, politicians are constantly being urged by land speculators, by developers, by the retail trade, all of whom donate generously to political parties, to adopt an irresponsible policy of unlimited growth in population. And that can only end in tears before bedtime. And until that is generally recognised and generally accepted, it's really important that organisations like SPA exist and contribute to the public debate. I think people should join SPA if they are concerned about environmental issues, because all of the environmental issues are proportional to the human population. They should join SPA if they're concerned about the erosion of quality of life in our urban areas where infrastructure palpably cannot keep pace with the increasing population. They should join SPA if they're concerned about our failure to plan for the long term because what Sustainable Population Australia most fundamentally stands for is thinking about the long term consequences of our choices. The future is not some, somewhere we're going, it is something we are creating. It seems to me that we should be consciously trying to create a future that we'll be happy to have our children and our grandchildren live in. So I believe people should join SPA if they are at all concerned about our future because it's one of the few organisations in contemporary Australia that is thinking about uh, what a future Australia might look like, what would be a good future for Australia compared with the one that we're sleepwalking towards.